Hello, folks. Okay, so I bought this box at an estate sale, and it's full of wrenches and stuff in there. And I thought maybe you and I could go through it together. I haven't actually gone through it other than just kind of looking down in it. The only thing I've done was just blow the box out with an air hose to get all the cobwebs and bugs and stuff out as much as I could. Uh, so I want to go through here and see what I got. I only paid five bucks for this box full of old antique tools. And uh, I'm hoping to find maybe some old Ford Model A or Model T tools in there. And uh, I know that, you know, the Ford Model A's and the Ford Model T's came with a tool kit. And I think some of the tools had Ford written on the tool. I, it seems like I remember seeing that before, but I don't, I don't know if that's specific to certain years or models or if it was on all their tools or only some of their tools. I don't know. I'm hoping that some of you uh, Ford Model A, Model T experts can uh, let me know. Now, I, don't, I don't own a Ford Model A or a Model T. I used to way back in the past, but I, I don't anymore. And of course, the, that vehicle that I had didn't have the toolkit with it, the original toolkit. But And I know that, you know, like with Model T's, they made over 15 million of them. So it's not like the tools are rare. I think they're probably collectible, but I don't think they're really worth a lot of money. But, heck, it's only five bucks. I think the box is worth almost five bucks by itself. So I didn't see how I could go wrong. Um, you know, there, there looks like there might be some neat and good stuff in here that's worth saving. Heck, I think people in big cities like New York pay five bucks or more for a cup of coffee. So at least I got something of value for my five bucks. So anyway, uh, let's, uh, I'll bring the camera closer so that you can go through this box with me. I'm wearing gloves today. I usually don't like to wear gloves, but um, for one, it's colder than heck out here. And number two, I don't know what's down on the bottom of this box. I don't know if there's any broken glass or sharp objects. So, you know, when I'm going through a strange box full of stuff, I, I like to protect myself so I don't get cut up with something hiding down in the bottom of the box. All right, so I'll go, I'll uh, get set up here and then let's, uh, let's go through this box together. Okay, the box says, DiGiorgio Fruit Comp Corporation. Hmm. On the side it says, Sierra Ranch. To their company, California. Hmm, interesting. Okay, never heard of them before, but kind of cool. All right, well, so let's see what we got in here. <coughs> Let's take some of the big stuff out first. I noticed that there's a big adjustable type monkey wrench. I don't know if that would qualify as a pipe wrench, maybe, but it doesn't have teeth on it. But um, it's definitely an old one. I don't see any uh, branding. There might have been something there. I'll have to clean it up and see. Does it adjust? Oh, yeah, still adjusts been pounded on a couple times right there. That's kind of cool. All right. By the way, I need to get a magnifying glass. I'm getting old. Can't see very well anymore. All right, so what else do we have? We have a, a crank. And I'm really hoping that this isn't blurring out on you guys. But there's a crank. For something, I don't know what. Looks like a casting flaw right there. Okay. Here's a monkey wrench. I love these monkey wrenches. I have quite a few of them. And uh, whenever I get one, oh, that, one, that one's got a split right in the top right there. I can weld that up, I suppose. Well, that kind of sucks. It's got a split up there. Huh. Oh, well. 
Let's see, what do we have? We have a lot of wrenches in here. I wonder what that says on it. I'm looking for anything that might have a Ford script on it. M40 17017. Doesn't say where it's made and it doesn't have the size on it. Hmm. So I don't know if. If anybody has any idea if these are Ford Model A or Model T wrenches in this box that I'm pulling out, please leave a comment because, to be honest, I'm, this is kind of out of my wheelhouse. I'm not really sure, to be honest. Okay, so let's keep going here. It's kind of a cool-looking wrench. What does it say back here? It says... Number 15. I don't see any sizes or any uh, script on there at all. So if you folks have any ideas, let me know. There seems to be a lot of these type of wrenches where it's boxed in on one and opened in on the other. Are they the same size? Do I, do I get... Well, that's definitely a different size. I don't know what size they are, so I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to size these wrenches and sort them accordingly. There's another one of those. I'm going to try to pull all these out. What does that say? That says 13. I don't know. What's a 13? I, I'm pretty sure that doesn't mean millimeter. I mean, well, maybe. I mean, I don't think so, though. No, that, no, 13 would be much smaller than that. This says 25. It's kind of hard to read. I don't really see any script on there either. I don't know who the maker of this wrench is. Hard to tell. I'm going to have to clean them up. There's definitely a lot of these wrenches. Again, no script. This is another M-40, but it's shaped different than the other M-40. This comes down like this. I think that's a little different, isn't it? No, it's about the same. About the same. It looks like the same size. So it looks like I have some, looks like I have some repeats in here for sure. Which kind of sucks. I was hoping for a whole set. So I don't see any more in there of that configuration. So this, this is kind of a, so let me actually, let me get these out of the way now. Well, that's kind of cool. I would say that that's for what, a uh, square nut and bolt of different sizes, three different sizes. Of course, no sizes again, so I'm going to have to measure and size all these wrenches and sort them accordingly. No, that wrench is uh, twisted and bent. Someone really put a lot of force on that. I can probably heat that up, get it back into shape, maybe heat treat it if I really feel. If there's another one that's good of the same size in here, I, I won't even bother. There's kind of a cool one. Anybody have any idea what that's for? Huh, I kind of like that. That's neat. Very unique. Oh, I know what this is. I know exactly. That's a tappet wrench. 
I've used one of those before. I've had many, many, many old vehicles in my life. Matter of fact, I've got a 1960 Chevy pickup, Apache pickup sitting in the barn right now that's in excellent shape. I take it out only during the summers. So, and I've worked on all of my old rigs. And uh, I've used one of these. This is a tappet ring. Oh, it's for right there. That's what it says. It says uh, tappet wrench. <laughs> well, I guess that one was pretty easy to figure out. I think this is another form of a tappet wrench as well. What does that say on there? The lavel. Never heard of that. It has these uh, two studs sticking out right there. All right. L298. Interesting. All right. Remember, if any of these are Ford Model A tools or Model T tools, let me know. Oh, look at this wrench. It says, uh, says uh, hope you can see that. It says Rock Island. Again, no size. None of these have any sizes on them. It says R1124 on the back. Hmm, cool. I like that. Oh, there's a piece of paper. What does that say? Model T. Model T, Model 4 starting crank. I wonder, is that meant for this? I... Don't agree with that. This is a triangular shape and it's a rather deep socket in there. But memory serves me right. Don't the Model A's and the Model T's, don't they have an end that when the engine starts, it has a pin on there to where it slides off so that it doesn't uh, grab and, you know, start turning the crank and breaking your arm. I don't think I'd want to start an engine with a configuration like that. I don't know. Let me know, folks, because I, I, I'm not too sure about this one because that doesn't seem right to me, especially with, with the end configuration like that. I'm not sure what that's for. Hmm, interesting. All right. Now what else do we got here? We got tons of these... Uh, Smaller wrenches, do any of them say Ford? No, nope, just has a number. 1595E with some kind of a logo that I can't make out. There's a ton of these and a lot of them. Look about the same size. It kind of sucks. No Ford written on there, no sizes again. Here's a smaller one. This one says something. You know, it just has a round looking logo, but maybe I can read it if I clean it up. I can't really make it out. All right, what else do we got? COG3525 in kind of antique writing on the side. And it has that logo again. You know, you know what that logo is? I just made out what that logo is. There's a little round logo in the center and it's IH. So I think some of these are uh, international harvester tools that came with the tractor. The, the box was in a barn on a ranch so I bet you some of these are, if not all of them, go to uh, International Harvester Tractors. Huh, that's interesting. No, uh, yeah, there's that logo again. No, that's, that's a circle with an M. Never mind. Okay, and it says 10, number 10.
but again, no size. But I'm pretty sure these are standard sizes. I just have to size them and then sort them accordingly. There's kind of a neat one. It has a, uh, a ruler on the side of it. It actually goes this way. So I guess here, somewhere around here would be one, two, three. I guess here's six. MHF, 11 sixteenths, 11 sixteenths. Well, that, those both aren't 11 sixteenths. Am I reading that right? Oh, one and one sixteenth, I'm sorry. Yeah, see, I told you my eyes are going bad. And that's 11 sixteenths. Ah. That's kind of a neat wrench, I like that. All right. More of these nondescript wrenches. There's nothing on there that I can see, but I'll I'll put a I'll put a wire brush to them and uh, or a wire wheel and try to find out what's going on with these. If there's any script on them, what does that say? Seven sixteenths USS. That says USS on it. Huh. USS. Not USA. That's weird. 3 eighths USS. At least it has a size on it. What is this? No, I can't make it. I can't make it out. It's, uh, it's, too rusty and hard to see. I'll uh, I'll clean it up. Let's see what that says. The wrenches keep coming. Another non-script wrench. Made in USA. Finally found one that says "Made in USA" on it. Drop forged. It has a number. Just says three on that side. You can't make out what it says on that side. So I don't know what that means. Three. I don't know. Uh, like I said, I'm going to have to size every one of these wrenches. Another small wrench with some kind of a logo on it. Looks like a V. It's got rulers on it and stuff. Trying to pull all the wrenches out right now. This one has been really twisted. Someone put a lot of force on that. <laughs> it's kind of a flat wrench, probably some, you know, for like a tappet, valve springs or something. This is pretty flat too. That says three quarters on it. Real thin, flat wrench. More nondescript wrenches. Look at there. Some kind of tape was on this, I can see. Yeah. Some small wrench, I don't know. A lot of cleaning up to do. Wrenches, wrenches, wrenches. Let's see here. Plastic. It says something on it. I don't see anything. It says Ford on it. Drop Forge. Made in USA. No size. I think all of these will clean up pretty well. This is kind of a Kind of a flat wrench, kind of an odd looking wrench again. I suspect for tractor or automotive. This one, this wrench has been cut off. <laughs> hmm. I guess someone needed it for something. Is that all the wrenches? Yeah, we've got a couple of these knives in there. 
If anybody knows what those are for, let me know. They almost resemble a, an old bale knife, but it also could be, I don't know, there's some kind of gardening knife. I think the blade's pretty thin. I don't know, they, I think they'll clean up pretty nice though. This one's got a little bit of paint on it. It's not like an upholstery knife, is it? I'm not sure what that is. If you folks know, please let me know in the comment section. Wire. I don't know what the heck that is. Some kind of a scraper. Uh, it's like an old brass knob, doorknob. Haven't a clue. You folks know what that is, let me know. You'd think I'd know with all the antique tools that I have, but um, you know, I don't I can't know everything. There's some nails in here, there's some old crusty plier, some old bracket, piece of metal, round stock, hmm, piece of beeswax. And then I've got some sockets here. Oh, wait a minute, what's this? Oh, an old crusty, rusty metal file. Good high carbon steel. So if you're in the blacksmithing, you know, you never want to throw these away because you can use these if you're like making a hatchet or a knife or whatever, good high carbon steel. So I always keep my old worn out files and use them for projects in the future. So even though it looks old and crusty, most people throw that away. I value stuff like that. I'll throw it in my junk box, and if I ever need a small piece of high carbon steel, there you go. Okay, I've got some sockets in here. Maybe we'll get lucky and find some old Craftsman or SK or Snap on or something. So let's see what we got. 17 millimeter Taiwan. Darn. Three quarter. Taiwan. Mm, that sucks. Let's see. 19 millimeter Taiwan. Looks like someone. <laughs> I don't know. Threw a bunch of this. 11 sixteenths Taiwan. Seventeen millimeter Taiwan. 13 sixteenths, Taiwan. Eleven sixteenths, Taiwan. Five eighths, Taiwan. And the last socket is eleven sixteenths, USA. Yay! But what is it? USA, but by who? Doesn't say. So I don't know. It's USA. There's a great big spider eggs nest on the inside. Looks like it's not worn down. Looks like it's in good shape. Well, that's a keeper. And other than that, there's an old spring in here. That's it. Well, I don't know. Was it worth five bucks for all that? Let me know, folks. Looks like I got some international harbor, uh, uh, international uh, wrenches in there. So that's kind of cool for like harvester tractors, stuff like that. I have, a, as you know, if you watch any of my videos, you know I got a couple of old tractors, but they're not international harvester. They're ones uh 1944 9N, and then the other is a Oliver OC3 crawler. But uh, I don't know if any of those were Ford Model A or Model T's or uh, tools or not. I don't think so. I think uh, most of them were International Harvester. So, but you know, five bucks. I think I got five bucks worth here. I think I think a couple of these tools alone are worth five bucks. 
I'm kind of disappointed in this adjustable wrench though that was cracked right there. I guess I can run a, a weld right there and kind of fix it up. But you know, I have so many of these darn wrenches. It's I've got them thrown in boxes all over the place. I got a couple hanging up in this shop and I even uh, use them for making adjustable wrenches. Uh, I mean, two-handled twisting wrenches for blacksmithing. So, you know, I've got, I've got these things sitting around all over the place. So I don't particularly put a lot of value on that. This is kind of cool, though. I do like this big old adjustable monkey wrench here, or pipe wrench, whatever you want to call it. It's a little beat up, but I think it's uh, nice enough to fix up. And after I get it all cleaned up, I might be able to find a name on it. I don't know. But that's kind of cool. I think that alone is worth the five bucks, really. So, I don't know. Let me know what you folks think. Talk to you later.